So this is what it looks like on the inside. Oh, hello. Welcome to our dormitory. Did you finish talking to the principal? That's right. We sorted out all the arrangements for tomorrow. I had the delightful opportunity to enjoy the academy atmosphere on the way here as well. If there are ever any other festivals or the like here, I'll have to try and come back by myself to see them. <laughs> So this is where you and your classmates spent so much of your time. <laughs> I almost feel as if I shouldn't be here. Like I've stepped into Class 7's private little world. Oh, not at all. You're very welcome here. So, how would you like me to show you around the building? I'm curious how things are upstairs now, too. Well, if you're offering, then let the tour begin. So that was once Crow's room. His room was opposite to yours then? Yeah, he only lived there for a couple months, but I can't picture anyone else being there. It was pretty handy having him so close by too, especially when we were making plans for the festival. We could just wander into each other's rooms anytime we needed something. You two must have trusted one another so deeply. And that makes the fact you two have to fight one another all the more depressing. Why must it be that way? Well, just know that while I may not be able to come with you, I'll be praying for the best. I appreciate that. Don't worry, Your Highness. I fully intend to win against him and bring him right back here. I mean, we've got you on our side. How could we possibly lose? <laughs> oh, Reen, you're such a tease. Besides, I'm hardly the lovely, kind-hearted girl you think I am. Pardon? At first, I was acting as a substitute for Elise because she couldn't be near you herself. I thought, if she couldn't support you, I would try to do so in her place. And before I knew it, I found myself learning things about you that even she didn't know. And the more I learned, the guiltier I felt. Guilty because knowing things she didn't made me feel, well, really happy. Oh, I, uh, I had no idea. And as if that weren't awful enough, I found myself wanting to know more and more. What right do I have to call Elise my best friend when I feel this way? I'm honored to hear that. You needn't think it was one-sided, Your Highness. I was happy to learn more about you through all of this, too. You were? I've learned how much of a prankster you can be, how hard you work for the people of your country, how smart you are. I see you always conducting yourself with dignity and pride, and I've also seen just how much you care for everyone around you. I'd be careful that one other interest of yours doesn't get out of hand, though. Oh, this simply isn't fair! It's like I'm the only one getting worked up here while you just play everything off, cool as a cucumber! Well, whatever happens, it's all on you! I take no responsibility! When we find Elise, I'm gonna tell her everything and we'll talk it through! All night if need be! Oh! Perhaps 
working together as a team might not be such a bad idea. Why am I suddenly filled with an overwhelming sense of dread? Anyway, none of this even matters if you don't come back alive tomorrow. So you have to, alright? With Elise, of course. Promise? I wouldn't dream of doing otherwise. The two of us will be back before you know it. So wait a little longer, okay? <laughs> I can't wait! Finally, sorry if I kept you waiting. Not at all. I think I actually showed up a little early. Finally had enough booze for the night I take it? Yeah, had enough of the bad company too, so I managed to skedaddle. I figure the others should be able to handle things over at the academy. Just standing here really does bring the memories flooding back, doesn't it? For as long as we spent here, it feels like we've been away even longer. But I'm glad you made good on your word and took it back from the Alliance. So am I. And I know I couldn't have done it without you. Say, while we're here, why don't we take a little stroll through the place? I'm feeling the itch to see if everything upstairs is like we left it. It's a date. Shame Crow isn't back with us like old times, huh? In a way, he hasn't changed a bit since his first day. Even then, he was never honest with his feelings. Oh, yeah. You helped out with the Arcus trials they all did last year, didn't you? Yep. We sent them all over the country, just like we did with you guys during your field studies. Sometimes, I can't help but wonder that if I'd noticed something was off with Crow back then, we all could have been spared a lot of heartache. I've known him even longer than you guys have. Heck, I was his teacher. I guess I keep thinking maybe there was something I could have done. It's not your fault. 
Crow's planning was meticulous. He'd been setting it up for years. He would have gone through with it either way. But I'm not going to sit back and let that be that. I'll face him down, beat him, and bring him back. That's my- He'll be back where he belongs. With us. And you'll be there with us too. Yeah? <laughs> I know you'll do everything you can. If anyone can bring Crow back, it's you guys. It's been almost two years since I traded in my bracer badge for the whole teacher shtick. But there's never been a day when I regretted making the switch. Likewise, we couldn't have ended up with a better homeroom teacher. Your methods seemed really bizarre at first, but when I look back, everything you did prepared us for what was to come. <laughs> Thanks. It makes me happy to hear that. I'd like to think that you all learned a lot from me, but over the past year, I've learned plenty from you guys, too. Things I never learned pounding the battlefield as a Jaeger or during my time with the Bracers. But whatever the future holds for me, I know the time I spent here will help guide me in whatever I end up doing next. Wait, whatever the future holds? You're not thinking of... <laughs> I don't even know anymore. No matter which side comes out on top in this war, the Empire's never going to be the same again. When it's all over, should I stay on as an instructor here? Should I go back to being a bracer? Or branch out to something new? All I know is that I want to be able to support you guys in whatever you decide to work towards, as much as I can. Just how I'm going to do that, I don't really know yet. I'm hoping that fighting through the battle ahead of us brings me an answer. <laughs> you really are amazing, you know that? No matter how fast we grow, you're always a step ahead of us, pushing forward into the unknown to show us the way. I'm never gonna be able to measure up to you, am I? What do you mean? You're experienced, reliable, always ahead of us, just out of reach, but guiding us forward. You're strict sometimes, but you're always compassionate, and you bury your weaknesses deep down to be someone we can rely on. And somewhere along the way, I started to hope that one day, I'll be able to finally catch up to you, so that we can think of each other as peers, as something more than just teacher and student. Oh. As things stand, I'm still a long way from being there. When this war is behind us, and life slows back down to its normal pace, there will come a day when I graduate from Thor's and head out into the world as a real man. When that day comes, I want to be there for you, in some way, as your equal. Oh my! <laughs> well, you're just full of surprises tonight, aren't you? With all that's been going on, I never realized you felt that way about me. You can be pretty daring sometimes, you know that? I'm sure you're well aware that I go for the classy, mature gentleman type, and not students, though. Yeah, but we're looking toward the future, right? Students grow up. Boys become men. Sure, I might not look the part now, but one day I'll be a dashing, handsome gent who can turn even your head. <laughs> All right. I want you to close your eyes. In fact, I'm making it a formal assignment. No peeking. Why? Shh, no questions. Good students are supposed to listen to their teachers. Well, if you say so. That as a little appetizer. In a couple of years, if you're still hungry for the main course, come and find me. I'll make it worth the chase. Still, there's no need to rush. I'm willing to wait, if you are. Thanks.
And thank you for coming by. Guess you're all done with work? Yep. The other student council members said they don't mind splitting what's left between themselves. I wanted to stay longer, but it was hard for me to say no after they insisted I take the rest of the night off. <laughs> Can't blame them there. You've always been a workaholic. Sure is nice being back in here. I mean, I never lived with you guys, but I would drop by all the time to deliver your requests on free days. And you always had to do it so early in the morning, too. I can't count how many times you went out of your way for me. Well, while we're here, how about I give you a tour? I'm curious how things are upstairs, too. <laughs> Why not? That was the room Crow lived in for the two and a half months he was here, huh? He lived with the rest of us in our dorm before that, but he seemed to have way more fun with all of you. I was a little jealous of him, to be honest. <laughs> really? If Crow was going to come back anywhere in Trista, it'd be here. What with how it connects all of you and even me, Angie, and George, I doubt there's anywhere in Erebonia he'd rather be. Yeah, you're right. I doubt he feels like he belongs while he's with the Alliance anyway. Which is why I fully intend to honor my promise to drag him back here. And I can't wait to see him graduate. <laughs> it really is amazing just how dependable you've become. When I first met you, I had no idea I would end up relying on you so much. Even after... I never thought you could handle it all. <laughs> I suppose we both had weird first impressions of each other, didn't we? I'm not proud of it, but I totally didn't believe you were a second year when we first met. That being said, you were quick to prove me wrong. You're so capable and reliable. <laughs> Thanks. But there's something I want you to remember, Reen. Like... I really do think you're amazing. And not just because of all you did at the Academy. You were chosen by Valimar, and you've gone through all kinds of scary experiences as a result. You've made a difference to the lives of so many, and you're surrounded by people who see you as their leader. But no matter what happens, no matter what you're up against, I don't want you to forget that you're only human like the rest of us. I don't really believe there are natural-born heroes out there who are superior to everyone else. And I don't think you're an exception. So don't feel like you have to shoulder everyone's problems by yourself. 
We're all here with you if you need us. There's no shame in asking for help or relying on others if you need to, okay? Wow, um... Thank you for saying that, really. Talking to you gives me a sense of ease in a way nothing else can. You're always willing to accept people for who they are, strengths, flaws, and all. I don't know about that. It was only because you were there to support me that I was able to start accepting myself for who I really am. That I was able to try and keep moving forward as I am instead of losing faith in myself. So, thank you. For everything. It's weird. Now more than ever, I feel so glad I was able to become Thor's student council president. If I hadn't, I might have never met you. And I doubt I would have ever started feeling like this. Like... <sighs> Rain, can you kneel down for a minute? Huh? Um, like this? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure everything will work out just fine. We might not be heroes, but that's all the more reason we'll see this through to the end without giving up. And we'll do it without losing a single one of us along the way. <laughs> Right.
Hey, you sure took your time. Guess you finished exploring the grounds, Milliam? Nope. But I didn't want to keep you waiting, so here I am. <laughs> this place hasn't changed a bit. It feels great to finally be back here. Yeah, it does. Well, while we're here, are you up to walking around inside for a bit? I'm curious how things are upstairs. Oh yeah, I'm curious too! Feels weird seeing Crow's room all empty again like that. I mean, we joined Class 7 on the same day, so he's always been there to me. Oh yeah, I guess you did. We were all pretty surprised when we got two new classmates on the same day. That's unusual enough as it is without one of them being a gambling addict and the other one being you. Can't deny that we made things more fun though. <laughs> True, I can't. I hope we weren't the only ones having fun, though. You had fun too, right? Yep, I sure did. It was my first time sitting down at a desk and studying and all that. I didn't think I'd like it so much. I had so much fun, I sometimes forgot why I was sent to the academy in the first place. Well, if it was that fun for you, then that's all the more reason we need to put things back the way they were. We'll bring Crow home, make it through the war in one piece, and then we'll go back to studying and having all the fun we want with our classmates like always. Reen, I've been feeling kind of off lately. Off? How? Every time I think about how we'll have to fight Crow, my chest hurts. It wasn't like this before. I don't know why either. It's not like I've hurt myself there or anything. He's C. He's our enemy now and we need to fight him. So, I don't know why I feel this way. It's all new to me. What you're feeling now is totally normal. Crow's our classmate. We might be on different sides right now, but he's still one of us. And fighting against a friend is hard. It hurts to fight someone you care about. So there's nothing off about it, Milliam. It's perfectly normal to feel the way you do. It is? Um, maybe it is for you, but I don't know if it's such a good thing for me to feel like this as an iron blood. These feelings might get in the way of me doing my work in the future, so I'd probably be better off without them. Maybe so, but I'm still happy you feel that way. Huh? Why is that? Not everyone will agree with me, but I think it's important to know what it feels like to be sad or in pain. We strive to be kind to others because we know what it's like to suffer. And it's only by overcoming sadness and pain that we grow stronger as people. Personally, I'd say feeling hurt is a sign that you're starting to grow up. This war is terrible, but fighting your way through it has given you feelings that will forever change you. You think? Yeah, in the best way too. For me, for the rest of our class, and for you, of course. But like I said, you're only just starting. You've still got plenty of growing to do, and I want to watch over you every step of the way. Wow. <laughs> I'll never figure out how you don't burst out laughing in the middle of all those mushy speeches. We're classmates, but you barely know anything about me, if you think about it. <laughs> You're right, I suppose. I don't know about your past, how you came to be an Ironblood, or what connection you have to Altina, either. 
That's not as big a problem as you think it might be, though. It's all trivial compared to the one thing we do know. We all care about you. <laughs> That's so. You love me that much, huh? So you gonna marry me when I'm all grown up and hot and stuff? <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Still, I meant everything that I said. And when all this is over, you can use all those new feelings you gained to keep on growing right here at the Academy. <laughs> Roger. Oh, hey, Reen. All done celebrating? I guess. It still feels early, but I'm bushed after all that walking around. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nuts out there. I'd finished clearing up the club room earlier than I expected, so I decided to swing by once I was done. It feels strange to be back here again. Strange, and yet I feel right at home. <laughs> yeah, I can't explain it, but being here again is somehow comforting. You up for taking a look around here with me? I'm curious how things are upstairs, too. Sure.
they're all empty, of course. I know it's silly, but a small part of me was hoping we'd find him in his room like normal, here to see what the commotion was about. <laughs> I know the feeling. Whether he admits it or not, I like to think our time spent in this dorm meant something to Krell. I want to believe it still means something to him. And to think, Crow's already experienced that horrible feeling of losing the one place you call home. He knows what it's like more than any of us, to be utterly powerless against the tides of change, to lose everything you hold dear. We may have been able to avert the worst in the end, but I can relate to that feeling of dread, at least a little. Yeah, I guess you would know. Maybe you guys can talk about it some more once we bring him back. And we'll definitely bring him back. That we will. I wish I could say Nord is safer now, but we still can't afford to let our guard down just yet. We only saw a snippet of what it would be like for war to affect it, and there's every possibility it could do more in the future. And then there's Calvert to think about. We're at peace now, but who knows if, or even when, that could change. Which is why we need to do what we can to make sure that doesn't happen. Still, as much as I wish I could be back in the Highlands, ending the war here in Erebonia should be my prime focus now. If ending it makes for one less potential threat at home, then I can rest easier at night knowing I've done something right. I don't want this land to be plagued by danger any longer. I've come to love Erebonia as much as I love Nord. You helped me protect my home, Reen. And now, it's my turn to help you protect yours. Huh. <laughs> you really are one of the most dependable people I know. Hmm? I feel like so long as we have each other's backs, we can overcome just about anything life throws at us. I wonder if this is how Emperor Dreykos felt during the War of the Lions. He was supposed to have allies from Nord too. If they were half as reliable as you are, I'm sure he must have felt the same way I do. <laughs> Your presence is just as reassuring for me too, you know. I can't help but want to answer to the unwavering trust you've placed in me, Reen. This land, our classmates, and everyone we've met along the way have become so precious to me. I find myself thinking, if I had all the strength of a Tempest, all the dignity of a hawk, and I could blow away all the obstacles which threaten them. And I don't know if I ever would have felt so strongly about changing myself for the sake of everyone here, if not for you. You've become my dearest friend, Reen. You really mean that? <laughs> Thank you, Gaius. That, that really means a lot to me. we're both inspiring each other for the better. In a way, I want all those things for myself for the same reasons as you. So that I can protect all of you and the homeland that I treasure too. <laughs> I'm sure we can do anything we put our minds to. May we both go forth and find the strength to envelop this land and its people in a mighty wind.
Hey, Rain. Didn't think you'd be here already. Neither did I, to be honest. It just kind of happened. Finished everything up with the wind orchestra, I take it? Sure did. It was great to be able to play together with them again. I swear, though. Looking around, you'd think we never left. It's just like coming home. Yeah, I feel the same way. Thor's might not be the home any of our class grew up in, but it's our home nonetheless. Come on, let's walk around for a bit. I want to check on things upstairs, too. Sounds good to me. Nothing's changed. Even after all this time, it's exactly as we left it. It feels like we've gone back in time to our last day here, but somehow lost Crow in the process. Yeah, his absence makes all the difference in the world too. Like any twinge of nostalgia I feel is somehow wrong. I know what you mean. It's like trying to perform a concert with an instrument missing. It's just not the same. Though in this case, the concert is our class. Y yeah, I got that. But you're right. He might not have been with us on day one, but class seven isn't complete without him. Which is why we can't give up. To go back to your metaphor, we might be missing an instrument, but we can still go out and steal it back, right? Right! Hey, Reen, I've got a question. Do you still remember the day of our welcoming ceremony? How could I forget? It was a pretty eventful day, but I still remember that you were the first to try and start a proper conversation with me. I guess you could say you were my first friend at this academy. <laughs> well, you were mine too. To tell you the truth, I was really, really nervous that day. I wasn't exactly thrilled to be here, for one thing. My dad practically forced me into attending in the first place. So I was feeling pretty doubtful that I'd be able to deal with wasting two years of my life at an academy I didn't care about. So in order to try to get a handle on things, I figured the first person I tried to talk to should be my opposite. What do you mean by that? Someone who, unlike me, had strong convictions. Someone who was looking forward instead of backwards. I remember seeing you there in that auditorium and thinking, there he is, he's the one. It sounds stupid, but I figured if I could make friends with someone like you, maybe I'd get stronger too. <laughs> wow, I didn't know you had such high expectations when you first started talking to me. But if that's what you wanted to do, you picked the wrong guy. I wasn't anywhere close to being strong. Worse yet, I was so oblivious, I didn't even realize that there were people around me who really cared. <laughs> I don't know about that. The fact that you're kicking yourself now means that you've grown up quite a bit since then. So no matter what you say, I'm sure I chose the right person to talk to. No doubt about it. Oh, thanks, Elliot. Spending time with you has made me stronger too. Strong enough that even Dad will accept the path I've chosen. And while it's come as some surprise, it's also helped me realize more than ever the real power of music. I don't think my love for music has ever been stronger, in fact. That's something else I owe almost entirely to you. You helped me find my path, and now, thanks to you, I can see it stretching out in front of me. Really? That's nice to hear. Well, you're stronger than you think. You always have been. Even if you're kind of small, the music in your heart has always roared. You never let that conviction fade, either. I've always admired that about you. And I've always been proud to call you my friend. <laughs> Thank you.
thanks. I mean it, Rain. You really are the best friend I ever could have hoped for. As long as we're together, there's nothing that can stand in our way. My thoughts exactly. That goes for Crow, too. Between the two of us, I'm sure we can make music so amazing, we'll even win him over. You've got that right. Together, we can do this. My apologies for my tardiness. You can't apologize if you're not late. I just decided to show up early. How are the horses doing? Splendidly, if not a little too energetic for their own good. Whitcomb was especially thrilled to finally be reunited with his master. <laughs> I bet he was. Nice to hear. There's not a brick out of place. Which means it's just as run down as ever. Still, I've made so many memories here. I wouldn't have it any other way. That's for sure. It's really nostalgic being back here again. What do you say we head on up? I want to see what things are like upstairs, too. Alright, why not? Crow's foolishness continues to baffle me. He's fighting under a banner that doesn't include him. He's the sort you'd more likely find in a casino than the capital. <laughs> That's for sure. 
Fighting for the Alliance really doesn't suit him one bit. I'm sure he realizes that too, though. He sees Duke Cayenne as more of a sponsor than an ally. So it's just a case of the two using each other while they share a common purpose. Winning him over won't be easy, but we should push this angle if we intend to do so. Rufus will likely be more difficult, given his key position in the Alliance and shared ideals. I didn't even think... My brother's always been my light, both dazzling and warm. He commanded respect, but he also deservedly earned my absolute trust. After the death of my mother, he was the only living relative who did so. And he was a constant. Someone I could rely on and look up to after I was taken into the family mansion in Berea Hard. <sighs> I know how you feel. Your brother is to you what Elise and my parents are to me. I'm sure he still cares about you too. He's probably just as worried about your inevitable encounter as you are. The two of you might disagree about the country's future, but that doesn't mean you can't care about each other. I agree. Which is precisely why I've chosen to fight him with everything I have. That, above all else, is the role that I must play in ending this war. I am the man I am today because of my brother. He gave me everything I have, taught me everything I know. He was the one who taught me how to behave as a noble should, taught me to raise horses, trained me as a swordsman. I was always looking up at him, as if he were some sort of celestial being shining in the sky above. So the idea that I could cross swords with him on equal footing and emerge victorious always struck me as absurd. But not anymore. For all their riches, power, and influence, even the greatest noble is human, and they can fall like anyone else. <sighs> My father always treated me with scorn. I was forever doomed to be the bastard child. But I always tried to act a noble. I suppose I did so out of some sense of duty towards my late mother. But as I spent more time with you, Regnitz, and our other classmates, my very perception of nobility changed. I found myself wanting to discover what it truly means to be proud of one's nobility. True pride. I can, and I will, surpass my brother. Not in order to justify the title given to me at birth, but in order to demonstrate the pride I have in myself as myself. And with you, my finest friend at my side, I know that I can accomplish that. <laughs> I'm flattered, but I'm not half the man you are. You've always had a meaningful sense of pride, more than anyone else I know. I honestly never expected I'd be able to be friends with someone like you. Not as equals, but I'm glad that I was wrong. It fills me with pride to know how much belief you place in me, and that you're even willing to put it into words. <laughs> Perhaps your numerous heart-to-hearts and endless supply of passionate speeches have finally rubbed off on me. No matter how this war ends, our position as nobles will likely never be the same again. Regardless of what happens to this nation, we will always have our pride. That should never change. There's the Eustace I know. I won't let my pride waver either. Not when I've got a friend like you to keep me in line. <laughs> that goes without saying. I can't have you embarrassing me now, can I?
Sorry I'm late. Not at all. You're right on time. I take it everything squared away with the chess club? It was nothing special. We just played a few games with the upper class students like we always used to. Of course, we couldn't decide a winner, but it's not like there won't be time for that in the days to come. <laughs> Good luck with that. You know, it's odd coming back here and seeing things exactly how we left them. It's almost as if this place were frozen in time these past few months. Yeah, that's true. Well, what do you say we walk around for a bit? It'll give us a chance to see how things are upstairs, too. Might as well. the same up here too. Can't say I'm terribly surprised. As ridiculous as it sounds, I was hoping against hope that we'd just find Crow sitting in his room as if nothing had happened. <laughs> Honestly, that does sound like a long con he'd try to pull off. I'm surprised the common areas are so clean though. I figured they'd be covered in a few coats of dust by now. I guess the upper class students worked hard to keep things nice around here. Presumably so. <laughs> I can scarcely believe how different a person I've become in less than a year. When I first arrived here, my blood would start to boil if I so much as heard the term upper class. But now, you're a new man. Honestly, when I think back to how I acted on our first day, even Milliam seems dignified in comparison. I came here with a firmly ingrained belief that nobles were the enemy, so that's the way I treated them. <laughs> That's certainly a time in my life that I'd rather forget. Ugh, how embarrassing. It's not like you didn't have your reasons, though. After what you went through as a child, I don't think anyone could blame you. Besides, we've all changed for the better since we first showed up at the Academy. I wonder if that's true. You're right about the reason, of course. I've hated nobles ever since the day they took my cousin from me. My time here helped me realize that not all nobles are so despicable, and that I was misplacing the blame for her death. That's something you and our other noble classmates taught me, and it makes sense to me on a logical level. Claiming that I've matured as a person feels somewhat... empty. Because I can't be sure I really have. How so? Having a logical understanding of something is one thing, but completely restructuring your beliefs around it is another. This war has proven that to me. I know as well as anybody that the nobility as a whole isn't the cause. But the nobles who are have taken so many lives. While I know it's wrong, in my heart, I still blame every last one. So the things I say and do might have changed, but inside, I'm the same hateful, immature child I was on the day we met. 
Still, that used to frustrate me, even make me resent myself. But not anymore. Why is that? Because I've accepted myself. My immaturity is still a part of who I am. I, I can't change that in a day, but I can keep trying. We're all immature in our own ways, but together as a class, we manage to make up for each other's flaws, making it the perfect environment for me to learn and grow. And it doesn't hurt my best friends a part of it. I mean you, Reen. <laughs> All I can do is keep learning and improving. That's the only thing any of us can do. We've still got a long way to go. After this war's over and once we've rescued Dad from the Alliance, this nation as we know it will never be the same again. Out. Stop laughing, damn it! I'm in the middle of a serious impassioned speech here! <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. You know how sometimes something makes so much sense that you can't help but laugh? <laughs> That's you in this ultra serious speech. I beg your pardon? You've got no shortage of strengths, but the one that really stands out is your ability to face the whole world directly. Eusis might argue you're a little too direct, since you do occasionally run yourself straight into trouble. But that stems from the strength of your conviction. You stand by your beliefs, and you're willing to fight for them. I'm not sure that's a good thing. Sure it is. It's why you're able to tackle problems that others would rather avoid, even the most difficult ones. Like the class system. Most people would have just seen it as a fact of life, but you see it as a problem that needs uprooting. I have nothing but respect for that. You're serious in the truest sense of the word, so this speech just made me laugh. What? That wasn't the response I was hoping to elicit. And what's with all this heart-to-heart -heart stuff all of a sudden? <laughs> you should know by now that if you try to give me a serious speech, I'll give you one right back. And I'm not even done. I'm being completely honest when I say that as long as the two of us are together, we can build a brighter future for Erebonia. Throughout the war, so many have gotten injured, or worse, lost their lives. And I don't want it to be for nothing at all. I want a future where people can look back and say their losses weren't in vain. That's certainly ambitious, but I'm sure we will. <laughs> We'll live our lives to better those of the people around us, starting with taking Crow back from the Alliance. And then we'll build that future of ours, piece by piece. It's a promise.
sorry for being late, Reen. I hope I didn't keep you waiting long. Oh, don't worry about it. I just got here myself. Finished everything up then? Yeah. Everything seemed to be in order over at the old schoolhouse, too. <laughs> and for once, even Celine was acting considerate. <laughs> you don't say. Being here like this really feels like old times, doesn't it? I made so many fond memories here in this building. I can't even begin to count them all. Yeah. Hey, seeing as we're already here, you want to take a little walk around inside? I'm curious what state we left things in, aren't you? Well, that sounds like fun. Then, I never would have imagined that Crow was an Awakener, or that he was working with Misty from Abin time of all people. Well, that makes two of us. When I think about the trial we had to pass, it's hard to believe he did something like that alone. It really makes you wonder. I mean, we had his help when we did it, too. His determination must have been incredible to take on something like that by himself and come out the winner. And I have a feeling he'll take all of us on by himself, too. That's what it comes down to. If we want to bring him back home with us, we'll have to show him we're even more stubborn and determined than he is. <laughs> I think we can match him point for point on that as long as you're there. And as the witch responsible for guiding you in Valimar, I fully intend to see everything through to the very end. Thanks. I'll be depending on you. Reen, I've been thinking lately. Somewhere along this journey we've taken together, I finally felt glad to have been born a witch. If I hadn't, I might never have enrolled at this academy. And if I'd never come here, I would never have met everyone in Class 7, and I wouldn't have met you. I'm really glad you did. With all we've been through, if anyone besides you had been guiding me, I doubt we would have come as far as we have. I'm happy to know you think so. Before I came to the Academy, and even well after I'd started here, I lived to fulfill the duties expected of me as a witch. I'd been that way ever since I was little. But all that time, I had no idea of the real significance behind everything I was doing. My life as a witch was so all-encompassing, I couldn't really see anything else. Emma... It was after I started here at Thor's that things started to change. I may have come here to keep watch over the fate that awaited Valimar and the one he chose as his Awakener, but I feel so much more than that now. Instead of just watching over you, I want to stand with everyone and fight alongside you as an equal. I don't want to be someone who just watches things happen. I want to be there with Class 7. No I'm happy you're with us. You've always been looking out for us doing as much as you could and supporting us in more ways than we realized. I doubt Class 7 would be what it is now if you hadn't been a part of it. So I think I speak for everyone when I say thank you for sticking it out through all the good and the bad. <laughs> I owe you guys a lot of thanks, too. Some days, the only reason I was able to keep doing my part as Class 7's president is because everyone... Well, maybe... Not everyone... It's because you accepted me for who I was, Reen. You must have had so many questions, but you were always so patient and kind. <sighs> oh. <laughs> Emma, the only reason I feel like I can fill the shoes of an Awakener is because I have you to guide me. When I first found out what I had to do, I was confused. I didn't understand what was going on, really. But with you by my side and showing me the way, I started to feel like I might be able to really do it after all. Is that so? Emma, 
I love you. No matter what fate has in store for me, I've decided I'm going to face it head on. Because as long as I have you with me, I know that whatever the challenge, I can rise to meet it. Will you stay with me? Of course! <laughs> what would Grandmother and Vita say if they could see me now? <laughs> this isn't exactly a respectable path for a witch to take. Maybe not, but who cares? We're old enough to make our own choices, and even if the path is a rough one, I'm ready to stick it out. Me too. I didn't think you would already be here. Hey, Laura. Did you finish taking care of things then? I believe so. It truly does feel strange to be back here, though. It's been a long road to return here, and yet, return we did. This building holds so many memories for us, I couldn't even begin to count. It sure does. Well, while we're here, you want to walk around inside for a bit? I'm curious how things are upstairs, too. Sure, I'd like that. why, but there was a little part of me that expected to find Crow here waiting for us. I mean, not literally expect, but there was just a little voice in my head going, what if, while walking around. I can hardly blame you. 
I felt the same. Instead, he's another obstacle we have to overcome. One of many. Yeah. Still, we've been able to face every challenge that's come our way up till now. Why wouldn't our fight to bring Crow home be the same? <laughs> that's a good way to look at it. Nothing stands a chance at declaring victory over Class Seven's combined might. Or our two swords. Speaking of... Reen, I realize I've asked this once before, but... Do you like the Path of the Sword? <laughs> Hearing that brings back memories. You really caught me off guard when you asked me that back in Keldic. Any reason it's on your mind again? <laughs> I was just curious. It feels as though, after our impending battle, things will never be the same. And so before that happened, I wanted to hear your answer one more time. For all I know, that answer's changed. Ah, oh, right. Well, it hasn't. My answer's exactly the same now as it was then. Swordsmanship is like a part of me. It's always been there, and it always will be. It's not a case of liking it or not, it's just part of who I am. Both my swordsmanship and my sword are me in a way. Maybe you'll be happy to know that my feelings on the subject haven't changed either. My stance and my resolve are the same as they ever were. I stake my pride, my soul, my very being on my blade, and wield it to attain ever greater heights. That is what it means to me. Why I value it above all else. Or, so I say, I'm conflicted to tell you the truth. Conflicted? About what? In both my time at the Academy and during these past few weeks of fighting alongside one another, I seem to have found something else just as precious to me. Are you suggesting... I've now discovered a new reason to fight. One that differs from the reason i fought for all this time. And that reason gives me more courage and power than I've ever felt before. Never could I have imagined there would be anything that would mean as much to me as my path of the sword. At least... Not until I met you. Laura? Reen. I... I think I love you. At first, we were just friends, but now I see you as something far more. That's why I need to know. Do you... Uh, do you feel the same way about me, too? <laughs> I wanted to be the one to say it first, but... It looks like you beat me to it. I always figured that as a man, it'd end up being my job. S sorry that was presumptuous of me. I'm simply not used to these sort of things. No, don't worry. You've got nothing to apologize for. I've always admired you ever since our first day here. Your swordsmanship is so elegant, strong, and beautiful that I couldn't help but be captivated by it. And by you. You're as strong as you are reliable, but that feminine side you show from time to time is adorable too. I'm always happy to be part of our class, but having a place where the two of us can better ourselves makes me happiest of all. Truly? I love you too, Laura. Even after we graduate, I want to keep walking alongside you following the path of the sword. And I hope that we one day reach those heights we're aiming for, but together. <laughs> I'm glad I finally got the chance to say it. <laughs> Laura? I had no idea it would make me this happy to hear you say you love me. My face feels like it's on fire from blushing so much. 
<laughs> I feel the same way, you know. We've got no way of knowing what the future holds in store for us. But we can't let a war like this stand in our path. Like you said, we have a lot of obstacles to overcome. And by overcoming ours, we'll prove we're capable of so much more. <laughs> yeah, we will. May we both wear the way of the sword proudly, and together protect our friends and our future. Sorry to keep you waiting. Hey, no worries. I haven't been waiting long. Did you take care of everything you wanted to do? Last time I saw you, you were still out in the garden. Yeah. Adel and I planted some new seeds. I found them myself. Really? I can't wait to see what they grow into then. Kinda nice to be back home, especially after so long. Yeah, really brings back memories. And now that we're here, why don't we head inside and walk around for a bit? I'm curious to see how things have held up upstairs, too. Sounds good to me. Crow ever plans on coming back to us. Honestly, I don't think so. Not of his own free will, at least. It's clear that he really believes in what he's doing. I've sworn over and over that we'll bring him back. I don't think that's going to be so easy at this point. But that's never put us off before. We'll get him back no matter what happens. Yep. We won't lose. Not to Zeno or Leo, either. Having to fight the two of them this way must be tough on you. No one wants to fight family. Yeah. 
But that's exactly why I can't hold back against them. If I show them even a hint of hesitation, I'll never be able to get through to them. I think the same's true for Crow, too. I suppose you're right. I've always wanted to find a family. Even my earliest memory has me wandering lost on a battlefield, trying to find somewhere I could belong. But eventually, I found one. Zephyr. They gave me a place to call home. Showed me a warmth only a family can provide. And always looked out for me. A place to call home, huh? Then we lost our boss. And the family who'd given me all of that decided to leave me behind. And I realized how weak I really was. On my own, I was nothing. <sighs> I always relied on them to keep me safe. But I couldn't do anything for them in return. After that, Sarah took me in, and I wound up joining Class 7. For the first time in my life, I was around people who needed me just as much as I needed them. For the first time, I could protect them just as much as they protected me. I found myself part of a completely different kind of family. One I didn't even know existed. And I'm so grateful to Class 7, and especially you, for giving me that. I still want to ask them why they all left me behind. But more than that, I want to show off the new family I found. I want them to see how well I'm doing now. Zeno and Leo were always important to me. But that's why I want to let them know just how important all of you are, too. <laughs> that's a heck of a compliment. And we'll do everything in our power to make sure you can show us off. <laughs> Thanks. It's weird. There's all kinds of ways to form a family, right? And it's easy to find where everyone else fits in ours. But you're just kind of... different. In what way? Elisa, Laura, Emma, and Sarah are like older sisters to me. Milliam's obviously my annoying kid sister. Machias, Eusis, and Gaius are like my big brothers. And so's Crow, I guess. But I don't think of you like that. You're not like a sibling, but something else. Something closer. I can't put it into words, though. See? Hmm. I feel the same way about you. You're more than family to me, and I'm glad to have you by my side. You might be a bit younger than most of us, but you fight harder to defend those you love more than anyone I know. And you're every bit as important to me as I am to you, if not more so. <laughs> Good. Anyway, we've got work to do tomorrow. The future of our Class 7 family rests in our hands. Yeah.
Sorry for the wait, Reen. Oh, hey, Elisa. I only just got here, actually. All done catching up with the rest of the lacrosse club? Yeah, it was great to be back with them, but I think we've done enough celebrating for the time being. Plus, um, Ferris ended up giving me a few friendly words of advice, too. It's kind of hard to say no to a girl who keeps insisting a lady ought to not keep a gentleman waiting, you know? <laughs> yeah, sounds like her all right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> never mind her. It really does feel strange to be back here in our old dormitory. In a good way, of course. As soon as I stepped through the doors, all the memories of the times we spent together here came flooding back. Yeah, same here. It's been a long time coming, but we finally made it. Well, while we're here, do you want to walk around inside for a bit? I'm curious how things are upstairs, too. Sure, why not? Time works, isn't it? It's only been a couple months since we were last here, and yet I feel like it's been years. I guess that just goes to show how much of a mark the time we spent here has left on us, though. Every room, every corridor has a memory attached to it. Just one look, and I suddenly remember it all like it was yesterday. You know, I guess that's true. I just wish Crow were here with us to share this feeling. It doesn't feel quite right without him. I wish you were here, too. He's as much a part of Class 7 as the rest of us. Give it time, though. Next thing you know, he'll be right here reminiscing with us. You really never change, Reen. It was clear from the moment we met. You were someone who really cared for others. And you're as kind now as you were then. You were our leader. Always tirelessly looking out for every member of the group and putting our needs before your own. We're so grateful for all you've done. And that goes double for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Reen. Do you still remember our first day at the Academy? Our first day? How can I possibly forget? First, we bumped into each other outside the station because I was so taken by the Lino flowers, and then that happened. I'd love to tell you I've done what you asked and forgotten, but that's just plain not possible. Sorry about that. I should have known. Then again, who am I to talk? It's such an embarrassing memory, I doubt I'll ever be able to forget it. And the part outside the station was the most picture-perfect way to meet you, too. Then we both had to go and ruin it. I really am sorry about what happened, though. Just so we're clear on that. <laughs> In a strange way, though. It kind of worked out for the best. Afterward, I just kept thinking about what happened over and over again. 
And before I knew it, I couldn't get you out of my head. <laughs> we barely met, and you were willing to risk getting seriously injured just to protect me from harm. That left a real impression on me. I kept wondering, why? Why would you do that? What kind of person must you be? Next thing I knew, I found myself watching you from afar. I was so curious about every little thing you did. And the more I learned about you, the more I wanted to know. I wanted to find out how you saw the world around you and how you were able to live so true to yourself. You know, you were always on my mind too. You've always been hardworking, with all the pride of a noble and a strong competitive streak. But I think what stood out to me the most was how considerate you are of others, and how you always put them before yourself. All that time you say you were thinking about me, I was probably thinking about you too. To be honest, you've been on my mind ever since our picture-perfect meeting, as you put it. Really? During the past few weeks and months, I've gotten to know more and more about what makes you the person you are. The two of us have had so many long talks about finding our own paths through life, or about deciding how we want to live. And somewhere along the line, I found myself hoping that between whatever you decided and whatever I decided, the paths we chose for ourselves would eventually meet and become one, so we could walk side by side. Does that mean? I love you, Elisa. And no matter what happens, or what you decide to do with your life, even if our paths one day end up parting, and we have to go our separate ways, my feelings for you will never change. Rain. <sighs> if it weren't for you, I'm not sure I would have ever found the courage to find a path for myself at all. I was only able to because of how much your determination inspired me. How it made me want to struggle on, just like you do. And I... I love you too, Reen. I'm so glad. Embarrassed now. I've got a lot of memories of this place already, but I think this one might leave the strongest impression of all. <laughs> so am I. I can't see my face, but I think it's safe to say it's redder than it was at the old schoolhouse. But I'll never forget this moment. No matter what happens, I won't forget. No matter what hardships I might end up facing, I'll just have to think of you and I'll be strong enough to overcome them. And the same goes for me, too. I've got no idea if I really deserve someone as good as you. There's still so much I don't know about myself. But I do know that I want you by my side, now and in the future. Whatever may happen, Elisa, I hope we'll be able to find a path we can share with one another. I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> 